So welcome back to Hooligan Designs uh, and today what we're going to do is we're going to start building the number boards. This is the second time I've done this, that's when I lost a load of footage from um, the brakes video. I also lost a load of footage I'd done on this so we'll uh, we'll start this again. Um, so where did I get up to with this? Well we talked about the paper template, obviously you're not going to see that so we'll talk about it again. Uh, and the process then of turning something from paper into metal. Um, so, first of all, you need to pick a design that you want to do. Uh, and for me, I looked at several different designs based on um, dirt bikes, motocross bikes, that sort of thing, pit bikes. Uh, and then I may, I like to make a paper design, actually put it on the bike, and then from there then uh, turn it into a metal design. So this is the actual design I want to make. And if we go over to the bike... It's going to sit something like that, not too overpowering, I don't think. Uh, it's going to use the original uh, points, so it should uh, should suit the bike pretty well. Uh, we won't know until we've made it. Once we've done that then, and we're happy with it, next thing to do is choose the material we're going to use. Um, for me, I've got two types, two types of metal, um, or not two types of metal, two thicknesses of metal uh, I plan on using. I've got two mil, and then I've got four mil alley. I'm going to make them out of the two mil first because I've got loads of it, and if it doesn't work out or I don't like it, I'm not wasting my four mil, which I only have a, a little bit of. So uh, what I'll do now is uh, I'll trace this out onto the two mil, and then you can. Uh, We'll start cutting it out and I'm making some plates. So obviously a bit of a da da done uh, moment here. I've already traced them out. I don't think I need to teach anybody how to trace around a piece of paper. Key points is always do uh, your holes first, so you've got reference points, and there always needs to be more than one. There's no point putting one hole mark on there and then using that as a reference point. So always a minimum of two, where possible three or four. Um, so that you con it's constantly lined up. Um, quickly drew round it, I've marked them off, cut both out at the same time, and then what I do is I will drill the holes and then I'll bolt them together before I start cleaning them up. That way, even if I ever change a heart and decide to, I don't know, make this uh, less swoopy and more of an angle, then it, they're both the same. So um, you've got uniformity there as opposed to um, doing one then doing the other, you'll never get them the same. Um, so it's just the way I like to do it. So we'll get on now, cut these out, get them bolted together and start cleaning them up. Okay, one of the issues I always have in this garage and I should rectify it, is I never have enough clamps or strong enough clamps. What I need to do is actually invest in some proper G clamps. Uh, but right now, just make do with what we've got. If I can, and if I can't, then uh, oh, they're getting cut out anyway. So this just might not be the safest way of doing it. Uh, over the years, I have made loads of like little brackets and stuff, and I've I always used to use the angle grinder to cut them, just because it seemed like the manly thing to do, and then just tied it up with hacksaws and stuff. About uh, last year, I had to make a bracket for something, and I just couldn't get it to cut right. Uh, so I just went out and bought the crack blades for for the jigsaw that I already had, but also for like a coping saw uh, and some better blades for my axle and stuff. Um, 
again it's just one of those things if you if you trying to use the wrong tool for the job I mean you could cut these out with an angle grinder but it's a bit excessive whereas you could quite easily cut aluminium with a jigsaw uh, it, it just makes life so much easier um, as opposed to struggling to get a nice clean cut with it I mean you can get a nice clean cut with an angle grinder don't get me wrong but it, it's just awkward so if you can get if you can get if you've got a jigsaw just go buy the right blade I mean talking a couple of quid for blades uh, and and if you can't then learn to use things like a hacksaw I am absolutely terrible with a hacksaw if I come to cut a straight line with a hacksaw it doesn't happen so that's why I then went off and, and sort my jig out so I can use that so uh, we'll get these cut out now um, and then get them drilled so we can get them bolted together before we clean them up so a rough cut doesn't have to be perfect as long as the holes are still in the right place we can shape it off afterwards using the bench grinder and the angle grinder and um, files and stuff so uh, yeah let's let's get this cut out Okay, two plates, like I said, not perfect. Um, but what we're going to do now, we'll whack them on the pillar drill, we'll drill these holes out so we can bolt them together and then we can start cleaning them up. Uh, I mean, it's not an extensive process. If you haven't got a pillar drill, obviously, you can just drill them with a hand drill and individually and then bolt them together for the same same reason. Uh, like I said, if you, if you don't do it together, um, It'll be highly unlikely you'll ever get them the same. Mm. You can already see that they're they're well off. You will never be able to eyeball up the same. So easiest way, like I said, drill the holes. At least they're the same, and then clean them up. We can always get rid of this surface stuff later with some fine grit paper. Not an issue. Bolt it together, obviously very rough, um, but it will serve its purpose. All we're going to do now is clean up all the edges, just smooth it off, and then we'll try and take it back to the lines where possible. It's not necessary, as long as it retains the shape. Um, this is where the paper template you're not really bothered it's not the finished product so the paper template can be rough as long as it's retaining the shape you want or the look you want you actually put the time and effort into the metal uh, and get the final product so we'll do a lot of cleaning up taking it apart putting it on the bike seeing how it looks uh, and just messing around until we've got the shape we want um, uh, and ultimately we might finish this and then go I don't like it at all and then and, and bin it um, well not bin it but we'll use the metal for some else um, so sometimes this can be uh, a lot of time and effort put into 
to making something simple like number board and it not it not work essentially just might not be what we're looking for um but hey we'll give it a go so all i'm going to use for cleaning it up is i'm going to use a bench grinder i've got my files here and then i've got my little files uh for for final sort of clean up um so yeah so we'll just give all these edges a good clean up uh make them look something like then we'll get them on the bike and have a look and, and see cool Yeah, so cut them out, cleaned them up with the files, um, got them both the same shape, just fit them on the bike to see how they look. Side, happy with, but from back here, they just look a bit flat. So I might put a slight bend into it. Uh, I might do, I might just leave them. They don't look too bad. Um, So yeah, so relatively happy. What they do need now is cleaning up with the small files, some sandpaper. Uh, I think I'm going to leave them in the so the two or three mil alley. I think I'm going to leave them in that. Um, it's stiff enough because once these are buttoned down, there's not much movement apart from the movement in the actual mount itself. So I'm just going to leave them as they are, I think, for now, and just give them a good clean up, tidy up. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, well, just pass the number boards done.
so that's them all cleaned up now. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Uh, I can see it's still not perfect. Uh, it will need a little bit more prep before paint, but. Work. I'll get them fitted on the bike and, uh, and show them on there. So there you go, all fitted. I'm fairly happy with them. You see, just look brushed at the moment. We'll go into paint. And if nothing else does, and get painted up to match the rest of the bike. Uh, I'll just leave them on there now. Keep looking at them. I might put a bend in. I might not. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how I feel. On the other side. Not sure. See what we see how we feel um, once we've looked at them for a few days. Right. Thanks for joining us. Cheers.